time around we're taking a disturbing dive into everything that makes us lose sleep at night. That's right, I'm talking about the extremely disturbing world of analog horror. Delving into some videos that will really make you question leaving the light on before you go to sleep. Hey everyone, it's Wildman, and in today's video we are going to be diving into some seriously disturbing analog horror videos, but this time around they are going to be re of already disturbing creepypastas, ranging from old video typing games you've never heard about to the classic Ben Drowned. And before we begin, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel as well as liking the video, and you know, as always, comment bruh to help us out. But real quick, I did want to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Rocket Money. So recently I've been trying to save up for a new couch because I think this one is honestly giving me back problems. Oh, my back! But honestly, trying to save money is such a hassle, especially when you have all your other bills to worry about. But Rocket Money has my back. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. The personal finance manager allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, monitor your credit score, and build your savings all in one place. Rocket Money has been great at helping me cancel unwanted subscriptions. It hunts them down for me with just a tap of the screen. Rocket Money does all the hard work for you. You're able to set budgets that can monitor your spending habits and get a friendly reminder from a notification when you've exceeded them. Not to mention, Rocket Money is also trusted by 3.4 million members and counting. To try it out today and unlock more features with premium, head to rocketmoney.com slash wowman. This analog horror video is centered around the Plants vs. Zombies creepypasta. The legend goes is that if you entered U53ZDV into the game's new username section, you'd be prompted with the following phrase. Warning, a command has been written to activate the developer mode of this game. Continue anyway? And according to the creepypasta, what ended up happening after you entered this username would be enough to cause you to never want to sleep again. Because within this version, everything would be extremely distorted and have this very off-putting feeling to it. And after this, the game completely goes off the rails, characters with only their heads floating in the air, staring at the player, and eventually the game ends up glitching out to the point where bloodstains would appear on screen, followed by an incredibly loud scream, and the laptop would just freeze. In this creepypasta, it was supposed to be about an old employee that worked on the original Plants vs. Zombies games, and when they found out that he was doing this, making this altered version, they ended up firing him. Now when this creepypasta first came out, in itself it wasn't really creepy at all. It's just a glitched version of the game, and then a screamer plays that freezes your computer. However, when diving into Vibing Leaf's adaptation of this creepypasta, it does bring a new level of horror to this not really scary creepypasta. Within the video, it starts just how the creepypasta does, with the player accessing the developer mode of the game using the 53DV username. The game ends up crashing, but when it boots back up, we are greeted by the distorted version of the game created by the ex-employee. And if you are familiar with the Plants vs. Zombies gameplay, you know that at the top of your screen, you're supposed to be met with your selection of plants, which you use in your arsenal to defeat the waves of zombies. But in this version, the icons are replaced by what looks like a blood-covered figure. However, other than that, the gameplay kind of just continues like any other version of Plants vs. Zombies. That is until it reaches the 4 minutes mark and the zombies just stop spawning. We're shown the lawn now empty and the house we're supposed to protect has been broken into with the blood staining the surrounding area. It's then when we're shown this and now I'm not too sure what this is, although I'm pretty sure it's a save icon, please correct me if I'm wrong. After that, we're shown a variety of question mark vases, followed by Crazy Dave who is now missing his body. The game only continuing to get more distorted as the video progresses. The plants kill all the zombies, but then something gruesome happens that would never appear in the original game. One of the plants stomps on a zombie, but instead of the zombie just disappearing like it normally would, it leaves behind a bloody mess. 
Not to mention that when the plants are eaten, they become extremely mangled and covered in blood. And when the game glitches once again, what appears on screen is a very disturbing image of one of these zombies. This next one is called Mr. Mix Remixed. Now Mr. Mix is a fairly unknown, mostly because it came out in the early 1990s, so most people have now forgotten about this relic of a game. But for the most part, Mr. Mix would play out as a typing game, similar to Mario Teach's typing and the SpongeBob SquarePants typing game. It's funny too because I actually accredit a lot of my typing skills to this one SpongeBob computer game. And Mr. Mix had the same desire as these other games to teach children how to function in this new digital age of typing. However, what was creepy about the Mr. Mix game is that the further you progressed into the game, the more difficult it would get. And I know that sounds pretty standard, that's like how most games go, right? But what was different about Mr. Mix is that the difficulty would reach a level that was pretty much impossible, unless you were Mavis Beacon. And as this difficulty would rise to the impossible, Mr. Mix would also begin to make very strange noises. and the creepypasta that arise about this game made it only creepier. Most children who played the game reported having vivid nightmares of Mr. Mix speaking to them in a quiet, raspy voice and threatening them to keep quiet about something. However, none of them would remember exactly what that was. One psychologist who saw many of these children reported being disturbed by the sheer amount of terror on the faces of the children as they recounted the details of the nightmare. Many of the children broke down in tears in the process begging for their parents to save them. However, no direct relationship to the game itself could be determined by these few cases. For obvious reasons, the game did not sell very well. It remained in relative obscurity until a few years ago, when PC hackers got a hold of a ROM of the game and started digging through it. Using memory hacking software, they managed to crack the game's code and bypass the impossible fifth level. What they found, however, was extremely disturbing and caused many of them to quit the expedition altogether. According to the reports these hackers left behind, the game behaves very strangely if the fifth level is bypassed. The game crashes violently and closes, writing a bunch of files to the user's system32 directory to the point that the RAM was almost filled. These files are reportedly pictures of people with horribly deformed faces appearing to scream in pain and agony, with their eyes appearing to be bleeding from their tear ducts and outer layers of skin torn clean off in multiple places. If the user attempts to delete these files, the computer will violently crash and a blue screen causing permanent, irreparable damage to the user's hard drive. Unfortunately, all of the original hackers declined to discuss what they saw in the final level. All of them became extremely paranoid and reclusive, refusing to talk about anything related to the game and showing astonishingly extreme symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Most of them ceased to be able to form coherent sentences within a week and within a month, all of them went missing. All remaining copies of the game were destroyed. And to this day, no one knows what was in that game that caused them so much psychological damage. Two years after this incident, a man was arrested after trying to kidnap an eight-year-old girl from a grocery store. Through DNA and fingerprint analysis, the man was identified as one of the original hackers who viewed the final level of the game. He was wearing a white chef's hat and had a look of unspeakable malice and insanity on his face. When interrogated, the man would say only one thing. I'm Mr. Mix. And this creepypasta, even though it's a little bit campy, it's still very creepy. And this rendition of the original Mr. Mix game is definitely enough to freak you out. Within it, a person named Brian says that they found a copy of this really old 90s game called Mr. Mix. I got my cheat engine ready and a hack designed for this game specifically, and you'll see why soon. And as soon as the gameplay begins, it does not disappoint. Because this game was obviously not meant to be played by children as the noises begin to distort the game. <laughs> The 
the gameplay continues and the levels become pretty much impossible, which is where the hack Brian mentioned earlier comes into play, and he's able to hack his way past the levels. Upon completing one of the levels, the disfigured faces mentioned in the creepypasta make their way on screen. And pushing even further, the game starts to completely freak out. And I do want to put a disclaimer right now because this next part genuinely scared me, so viewer discretion, as always, advised is advised. This is a screenshot of what's about to happen, so timestamp here if you do want to skip it. After this disturbing section, a message appears on screen. It reads, David, Emily, Lorenzo, Maxwell, Ronald, Andre. Six bodies were found mutilated beyond recognition in the sewer. All had the mark of the chef's top hat on their faces, and all had lost their noses. We are currently still searching for the murderer, and unfortunately the case seems to be at a loss here. The game then crashes the entire computer, and only one message appears. Mr. Mix. Brian then chiming in saying, This game also left some images of dead bodies on my desktop, which if I'm going to be honest made me a bit sick. Tried to delete those and guess what happened. To which then Brian shows us his computer crashing to the point beyond repair. This last one is the shortest of the bunch and is a re-adaptation of the infamous Ben Drowned creepypasta, which is a creepypasta revolving around the Legend of Zelda game Majora's Mask. Within it's a young man who comes across a bootleg cartridge of the N64 game, but when he plays the game, he begins to suspect it is haunted by the ghost of a boy named Ben, who drowned. Now the story is a lot more complex than that, but that's essentially the gist of that creepypasta. And in this video, it brings that terrifying story to life. Gameplay of the Majora's Mask plays on screen, before it is interrupted by Ben, who tells the player the following. As much as I enjoy having a little fun with you here, at the same time I wonder if you still understand me. Do you get what I was trying to tell you? But alas, who am I to question fate? And yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to check out Vibing Leaf's videos, the creator of all of these videos. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well as liking the video and commenting, bruh. A huge thank you to my ultimate tiers, Karim Arellano, Knight98, and Kpop Lover X3. And if you do want early access videos and want to support me, it's only $1.99, so if you join, that'd be super awesome. And yeah, thank you so much for spending some time with me. It's always super great. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Love ya.